All right, good afternoon. Just uh, really uh, encouraged by our first three days. I think our guys have really been working hard and, and uh, love our meetings, just attention to detail, the walkthroughs. Um, got some strong leadership, which is a big part of that, and getting our new faces to, to, to buy into our process that we go through here in, in, uh, in fall camp. And then with our new schedule of having three days on and then now have a regeneration day where they're they're getting a lot of recovery meetings um getting good uh good film even some walk through time a very important part of the process so then come back tomorrow and be back in shoulder pads for the next couple of days and then be full pads for practice number six so a good start guys are working hard i uh, like the energy love the effort and uh just gotta keep, keep, keep a little bit better every day questions uh, Tom, as you mentioned, obviously you guys aren't in full pads yet, so I know you can't openly judge so much here, but uh, just what's impressed you so far about uh, the running back room? Basically, what do you, what you just, and, and each of those individual guys that are competing for that starting job, what do you what do you like about what you're seeing from each of them at this point? Yeah, I would just go through, you know, you got, uh, the, the thing that sticks out to me is the speed, you know, so um, got some new guys that, uh, both with Sean Shivers and Jalen Lucas, two of our fastest players on the team, and and, uh, um, you know, David Holloman still, he's in that top three as well for speeds overall for our whole team. So um, I think that's that's what jumps out to me. Um, Josh Henderson just, just so solid in so many areas. Um, and I think that uh, as they continue to get more comfortable, um, and I think just ball skills as well for all those guys, which is critical. Um, you know, and then Trent's big, big back, 235 plus pounds. And, and uh, Charlie Spiegel, same thing, big back. Um, just got a lot of different options there uh, in that room, all different kind of skill sets and ways to get those guys to football. But, uh, you know, we got to run the football, and that's where we, you know, obviously only one day in pads, which was yesterday. Um, can't tell a lot, but you can tell some. I thought our inside run period was very, very physical, uh, which I want, and that's what it's supposed to be like. And both sides of the ball sharpen each other, and uh, just getting that getting that ball downhill, you know, and running it effectively. So just uh, they're got several guys in there. They're all competing. There's obviously you play one back at a time. Usually, sometimes you can have two, but won't have more than that, more than likely ever. So um, just uh, trying to be able to get that room, you know, where they're able to, you know. Understand their assignments, execute at a high level, and you got to make a guy miss and go score. Hey, coach, how you doing? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm okay. Um, one position that has been talked about a ton: a tight end. Obviously, you lost a really good one to Peyton Hender, Hendershot, but you got AJ Barner back. I know you guys are high on him, but after AJ, I know you got to play multiple tight ends. It's a position where you can get injuries, a lot of physical physicality. Who's kind of stepping up? And there's some young guys, but who's kind of stepping up that position? And, and who do you want to see kind of step up? Yeah, I think you're right. There's a lot of young guys. You know, you got uh, a really pretty young room. You have no seniors in there, and uh, AJ is a veteran, and he's uh, he's doing what he needs to be doing. Keep getting better every day. And and uh, Aaron Steinfeld's a guy that's uh, been getting a lot of reps. And and uh, James Bamba, those would be the top two guys that have really stuck out uh, to be able to. To be that second, third guy, you know, in, in the mix there, and and uh, I think uh, Brody Foley's another one that's uh, came here in January and and uh, hasn't had as many reps. He was coming off a postseason surgery, but but uh, it's nothing. That's uh, he's back 100% ready to go and getting those guys ready. And and I think those would be the top three guys right now that are getting reps and in the mix. But uh, yeah, it's a critical position for us, and want to be able to maximize it and use it. Want to be able to to play with two tight ends at times and. Sometimes more so, but that's uh, um, you know a lot of use in that room and those guys that are getting their opportunities uh, to learn the offense and and to be physical and be effective. Sam with the mic. Uh, good afternoon, Coach. How are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Noah Pierre. He's a guy who played safety last year, moved to corner out of necessity and injury, and now is. Uh, at Husky, can you talk about just his team first mentality uh, and the skills that you know all three of those positions he has that that brings to that Husky position? Yeah, he's he's special to me. You know, uh, I, th I think he's a great testament to perseverance and grit. 
Um, I know there was a point in time when he was frustrated, you know, and, and came to see me and came to see his position coach and and uh, a couple years ago and just was, you know, I'd been bounced around a lot of positions and he's just one of those tough, gritty guys that that uh, could do a lot of things. He could play corner, he could play the nickel, he could play safety, uh, which not a lot, not everybody can do that. So I think that was, you know, that was valuable. And I think he's realizing that now uh, what he did though was he bought in like you said he bought into our culture here and and just the whole idea that man it's uh, it's not about me and I got to do what I can to help this team be successful and he uh, uh, through that process established a lot of great skills that like he could play three different positions and uh, um, got on special teams a lot in the 2020 year and then this past year as we've talked about had a chance to be a starter and and when some guys in front of him went down, and, and now he's you know our our starting husky and just a really really good player. You know he's got a lot of toughness to him. Uh, he's got a lot of moxie and savvy, uh, and because of his coverage ability, he really allows us to do a lot of things with that position and that that, that personnel package. So that really uh, really excites me. But more than anything, you know, matter of fact, we got a young uh, one of our true freshmen that's kind of going through the same, you know, he's been here since January and, and you're still trying to find his way. I'm like, hey, you, you, we had him meet with Noah and just talk about, hey, tell him your story. Talk to him about your perspective on the ability to persevere because he was a couple years before he got a chance to, to get on the field. So uh, I just think it's just a great testament to, to his character, the way he was raised, his family, uh, his high school coaches, and then just his ability to accept that and, and but not, not quit working. You know, he wasn't playing as much as he wanted to early on, but now he's become really, really valuable part of our team on special teams and obviously on defense. And so, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's a really, really good player and got an amazing attitude. Mike Yeah, hey coach. I wanted to ask you about the uh, the drop off in interceptions from 2020 to 2021. I've heard a lot of you know talk about it being in part due to you know different types of coverages going from uh, more zone to more man last year. Um, be, beyond that, kind of what what are you keyed in on now that you're going to be the play caller again on defense to, to get those numbers back where they were in 2020? Yeah, you know I think. Uh, you know, obviously, it's been a huge point of emphasis. Um, you know, you stated it; it's pretty obvious. The drop off was was immense, um, and uh, you know, we have three components that make up our DNA: takeaways, tackling, and effort on defense. And you notice takeaways are first, and uh, all three are very, very important. You better be a great tackling team if you want to be a great defense, and you better play with fanatical effort. So, all three are very important. But takeaways just change the game. I mean, everybody knows the the stats about the turnover margin, which is the offense and defense combined. And as you are able to protect the ball on offense and create takeaways on defense, that's how you win football games. And so. Um, always been a huge part of our focus uh, and I know there's there's certain years when you get more than others and I understand that um, and some years it's frustrating when you're trying we've had these discussions even before the 2021 season where we didn't get as many as we as we maybe got the year before and there was always questions about us. I, I get that dynamic and been doing this enough to know that that's part of it too but I also do think like you said there's um, you know certain emphasis that you have on, on how you play I think there's two parts to that it's the it's the aggressiveness and the violence that you play with. I think that creates takeaways both with causing fumbles and hitting quarterbacks or pressuring a quarterback and making him throw in the, in the, you know, before he wants to or when his feet aren't set or whatever. You just you get him off, off point and off schedule in his, in his drop and his timing, and you, you can create those takeaways. And then you, you disguise your coverages. And, and then, you, like you said, you play you know, um, with more zone than man, and that can create those opportunities as well just because you have your eyes you know, on the quarterback more more times in zone. Obviously, there's different types of zones. You can play matchup zones, and you can play straight vision zones. And so, just the ability to to get our eyes on the quarterback more, um, I think, is 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 part of this process. But that's just kind of you know, every year you kind of mix and match that and change it up a little bit. And but yeah, I think those are all variables for sure. And but you, we all see how big they are. I mean, it, it changes everything. I mean, it, it takes pressure off your ability for your offense to have to drive 75, 80 yards, which is really hard to do. Consistently, statistics show us that, and and that's why takeaways are such a big part of the game. So, yeah, it's it's going to be a huge emphasis. It has been, you know, we have our whole 
accountability structure for practice is based off those takeaways and, and, and secured it on offense and taken away on defense. And so and if you don't get what you're supposed to get, then you're going to be held accountable for that, you know, as a whole unit, you know, and I'm part of that as well and all the coaches. So um, that's definitely an emphasis and a focus. But I think every defense in America, you know, wants to create takeaways. I mean, that's that's just how you how you win games for sure. So we got to do everything we can do. And there's a lot of, a lot of pieces to it, a lot of things that go into it. And how hard you play is part of it as well. And being around the ball, we talk about, you know, the ball finds energy. That's a, that's a phrase we like to use in our program, and I love that. The ball finds energy. When you're around it, you're playing hard, you're playing physical, you're tacking, and you're flying to it, and you, the ball just sometimes just pops right there, and then you're able to make a play. And you just think of a couple of years ago, we had one of our D linemen get an interception, you know, in a Big Ten game, and down the field pursuing and just being a part of it. The ball got tipped right into his hands. So, ball finds energy, and that's going to be part of it as well. Zach and Jack. Tom, I guess um, asking more broadly about your secondary, I know that a number of those guys have played a lot of football. Some of them were really maybe part of that core group that, that engaged you very early last off season, just about kind of, you know, putting 2021 in the past and all that. But how much do you feel like that defense relies on the voices, the experience, and, and even maybe the on-field leadership of guys like Monster and Bryant? Taiwan, Jalen, I mean, just at some level without wanting to be cliche, I mean, is that an area that you look to and kind of say, we, we need you guys to really just be at the center of everything for us on and off the field this year? Absolutely. Uh, I would agree with everything you said in regards to their leadership, their being vocal. Um, you know, you don't walk past a mistake. You don't walk past something laying on the ground that's not supposed to be there. You pick it up. Uh, you make sure guys are doing a little things like that as well. Um, you hold each other accountable. Uh, you, you're verbal on the field and making checks and adjustments. You make sure everybody's running the football with high level of effort and energy every snap, regardless of how you feel in practice and how tired you might be. Um, and that's the leadership of that group. They've been here a long time. They've played a lot of football. Um, and you're right, they do. And they not just in making plays, but just also in, in how we prepare how we practice, how we watch film, how we study, how we handle ourselves, you know, in the film room when your coaches aren't there and you're doing extra things on your own as a group to get better and prepare and study and, and all the different things. And then the focus during the walkthrough. So, yeah, it's a huge part. And you think about, you know, we play with five DBs and we're four two five defense, and that's how we've always been since I've been here. And, and that means there's going to be five guys, you know, and on the field and that from that those rooms from the safety room from the cornerback room and we, we have the huskies with the with the safeties as far as how they are coached and and uh, so that's a big part of our defense and those guys need to be able to fly around and you know i think uh brylan lanier is a new young man that's uh, made some plays here already in a very short time he's been here and and jamari sharps another those two guys really stuck out to me uh, i think lim watley neely is another one that's really we lost him all last year to injury and he's back now and it's really uh Kind of just coming into zone. I think Josh Anguinet looks the best he's looked since he's been here. And those are guys that that uh, you haven't mentioned from the previous group there. That, that in addition to those guys and just the depth you have to have. So those guys are all got really good length and can run. And uh, so yeah, it's been it's just we knew it was a priority and we made it a priority. We got the younger guys still trying to figure things out and and uh, uh, help us as well. So but yeah, our defensive secondary is one of our strengths and they need to be and they need to be leaders and be productive. They need to be the guys that help us get. This thing where we want it to be. Jack, Jack, and Andrew. Hey, Coach. Um, after the first week of fall camp, how has DJ Matthews looked coming off of his injury, um, and just how big is that for to get him back? Um, and is he going to be ready for for week one? Yeah, he's expected to be ready for week one. Uh, to answer that part of the question, um, I think I'd probably the best way to say it would be after after the first practice. Um, we came back together as a staff. It was the general consensus, right? Like, wow, man, boy, did we sure miss DJ last year, you know, and he didn't get to play very many games. Um, so you kind of forget uh, how good he really was. He didn't practice in the spring, obviously, with coming off that injury. So uh, he's, it's, it's still a progression. You go through everything and, and more than anything, it's just the, the load that he is able to handle. Um, but uh, man, he's just a special player. He's got really, really special ball skills. He knows how to get open. He's got a lot of moxie and savvy and, and toughness to him. So just a really good football player. And uh, it really, really hurt us last year by losing him. And uh, um, it's great to have him back. So, yeah, we expect him to be ready to go uh, week one. And uh, um, he's a 
he's a talented player that has really bought in and has become a leader in that room, and that excites me. He's so locked in in meetings. He and I have met a lot one-on-one -on -one his last, you know, this past year for sure, even before that, but just a real strong connection there, and I've got a lot of mutual love and respect for him and, and the man that he's become. Andrew, and Keegan. Hey, Tom, you've talked about linebackers previously, just the importance of that position group. I know one of those guys is Jared Casey. What have you seen from him since he joined the program? I guess just what does he bring? He's one of those guys that has that Power 5 experience. Yeah, I tell you what, he had his best practice since he's been here yesterday. So coming off of that, and these are things, you know, I don't sit here and say things I don't say to him and and we talk about you know in position rooms and defensive rooms and and uh, he he's tremendously uh, athletic uh, he's our most athletic linebacker that we have on our team and so he brought that with him when he got here and I think the areas we've seen really grow in is just his you know physical strength in the weight room and then just playing with that physicality on the field and, and not using the speed and finesse to be his strength. And so the, the speed is still a big strength of his. And so I just uh, really been encouraged. You know, he's been here in the spring, which is important. Been here all summer. Now into practice number three that we had yesterday, uh, first time in pads, just really loved his physicality. And uh, that to me has been a challenge. And that's where he's he's responded, you know, and just mastering the defense and learning the fits and the reads. And, and uh, so, uh, but yeah, I just really, I uh, have high expectations for him. You know, that's why we brought him here, is to, to play and to help us. And, and uh, he's a guy that we're, we're counting on to be able to do that. You know, we have to have um, a lot of guys to play on special teams and on defense and, and to be able to play with, with the effort to play for for 60 minutes. Like we said before, you know, I think we played, didn't play enough guys last year, and it really hurt us. You know, sometimes it was, you know, by necessity. But early on, I think it was by choice that we needed to, to address. And, and so I just think he provides that there. And, and uh, he's going to play our expectation. He's going to play a lot of football this year. So I've uh, been encouraged by him. So, but, to, but to answer completely, I think athleticism is what he brings. And, and uh, also just uh, got a good, good football IQ. Some guys have a real knack to get to the ball and especially how to rush the passer and different things. He seems to have a good knack for that. And so, you know, those are the kind of guys you want to get on the field and, and uh, needs to lead and produce. All right, can you get last one? Hey, Coach, kind of give us an update on the offensive line. I know that was kind of a position and a group of concern last season. Have you seen an uptick in production of them, and are you maybe more confident in them so far this summer than you were last season? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, once again, we've had one practice in pads, so it's hard, really hard to evaluate O-line, D-line play, you know, in, in uh, spiders. Uh, so, um, that to me will be an ongoing assessment, but uh, definitely – Really good first day for that group and the D-line as well, as far as just being physical with each other. And that's, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, for you play O-line, D-line, uh, even when you're doing fed tempo or not going full bore live, those guys are pretty much always, once their shoulder pads on, they're pretty much live all the time. So just trying to keep them on their feet. But I think that's a group that what I like is that the older guys, I see improvement from even Matt Bedford, you know, Luke Haggard, guys who play a lot of football here, Michael Cady, those guys all play a lot of football here. And then we got other guys stepping up. And, and to me, you know, just Zach, um, you know, just as a, our center there and, and Carpenter, just trying to be able to um, really, truly develop him and, and elevate his game. And, and Tim Weaver at guard and, and uh, um, Khalil Benson at guard and all different guys were trying to get ready there and, and, and Randy Holtz and, and uh, just, just the whole group that were trying to get those guys to push each other and develop each other. And, and we got you know, a new guy coming in with Parker Hannon trying to figure out you know, his role and his niche and on this, this team. And so to me, the group has to keep getting better all the time. I've been impressed by our younger guys. I think uh, you know, we talked about you know, Carter Smith coming in as a true freshman and, and uh, Bray Lynch coming in as a true freshman and, and, and DJ Moore, those guys. Of, you know, and, and uh, I do think that uh, there's there's more depth there than we've had for a while, which is good. And and you know, Josh Sale is another guy we're expecting to, to step up and keep getting better and better and better. And that's important for us. And so I just uh, yeah, it's a group that we know has to step up, has to play better. Uh, whole offense has to, you know. But big men lead the way. So if you want to have that phrase, and you better you better own it, you know. And that's what we talked about. Me number one for a whole team. And the buck stops with each individual person, and them taking ownership. Each coach taking ownership of his area of responsibilities. My 
myself take ownership of the whole operation and everything we do here. So um, that O-line is going to be huge in our offense, and it needs to be, and I expect them to be. And so uh, we'll be watching and their progress closely. But I do think it was, we have, we're off to a good start. And it's been a focus, physicality and toughness up front, and just execution and being able to be, you know, doing our jobs at a high level when it counts the most, which is late in drives and late in the fourth quarter. So we'll just see how they keep progressing, but they, they got to be the leaders of our offense without question. All right, great. Thanks, Tom. All right, and have a great day, Elio.